extend their back. To oh. <laughs> it's, it's so freaking ridiculous. I'm so excited. In this interview, I interview Sonny Ono, the legendary Sonny Ono. We're going to talk about the past, the present, and the future. Some of you may not recognize him, but he was in WCW as an actual manager for a whole bunch of wrestlers. Ding, ding, ding. Enjoy. <laughs> So, Shadow, welcome. So, Sonny Ono, listen, I, and, I, and I know you're a busy guy. You're over there, you know, doing power moves with Fight TV and a whole bunch of stuff over there. Uh, when did you start martial arts? Let's just go dive right into it. When did you start martial arts? Well, I came to the United States um, uh, when I was 11 years old. So, uh, when I got here, and we kind of talked about it a little bit before, but... Uh, uh, you know, if you're if you're an Asian guy in the country, you know people always going, you know, walking up to you and goes, "Hey, you know any kung fu? You, you you know you you know karate? You know?" And and uh, I know I'm Puerto I, Rican. They always ask me if I have a knife. I got you. <laughs> so I studied judo, um, and and uh, um, it was pretty much like if you would play baseball here as a young man. You did some kind of martial arts when you were in Japan, whether you did kendo or judo. Judo is really popular, um, or, or you did karate. And so, you know, the judo was my thing, and I, I and I, I I used to watch and and did some started in, in in karate, but I didn't really start my karate until I got here, and I couldn't find a judo school so, when I got here. So, uh, uh, as I told you the other day, uh, a guy named by Gary Johnson, who was a student of Peter Irvin. Um, uh, who was in service, and I studied with him, and that's how I got started in, in uh, uh, Goju. Now, why got, why got you into competition in the wrong place in Iowa? What the heck? Well, the reason why I live here, because if I lived in New York or New Jersey like you do, money's right, different. Jesus. There's, there's, no, no, there's too many of the same people. I like to be unique. <laughs> here in Iowa, I'm the only dude here, I'm the only Japanese guy here. Matter of fact, when, there's a, when they need an interpreter and, and court cases and, and state of Iowa, they call me to translate. <laughs> that sounds that's awesome. So I just got off the, um, an interview that I was listening to for a little over two and a half hours, and you went on a whole bunch of extensive stuff in your career with WCW, which I had no idea, but it was pretty funny stories. But before we get into any of that stuff, so now what got you into competition? And I know you probably started, it had to be mid-70s mid and not early 70s. Yeah, 70, 70, 75 to 81, I was the number one bantamweight in the world. That was the PKA days there, baby. That, that's, that's another thing, too. I remember seeing um, those rankings. But you, depending on the decade, you were also known as one of the top Gata guys. And like I mentioned um, yesterday, which we didn't get a chance to record, you did some of that side side move there where you put the arm <laughs> on the top and you did a front kick. But um, again, competition. What got you into competition? You're a freaking Iowa. What makes you go compete? I mean, how, how did that happen? Karate Illustrated, maybe? I don't know. Well, just like a young man, you know, just like you. You, you want to see, am I good? You know, you, you, you want to test yourself. So uh, I would used to go up to, it's about two hour drive from here to Minneapolis. That's when, uh, uh, that's about the period when, when uh, uh, John Worley, Pat Worley, Gordon Franks, Larry Carnahan, uh, Gary Heslow, those guys came from East Coast. Those, 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 those were originally from Texas, and then they went to Maryland via Junri, um, right, right. Met, met America Junri, and then they became right. National Karate. Right, and they opened they opened Mid America and USA Karate back then, and and they they started the first karate tournament. Um, but and I had befriended them, I, you know, then I learned to learn to train in kickboxing. And boxing, and you know, I want to know how far I can take my competition level two. And and I had a great opportunity, and they helped me, and I got to compete in kickboxing. Um, and and uh, I got to uh, uh, compete in, and you know, just like any young man, if you remember your days, 
you know, the two things you want to do when you're about 21, 23 years old is that you want to travel. This is the only way I can pay $25 and fight people and not go to jail. That's right. Two, you know, there were so many ladies out there that I could meet out there. That's right. You know? so, that, that testosterone you know, is something, huh? Oh, well, yeah. So, you know, those are the two things you, 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 have to, you, you have to deal with. So that's what we did. I mean, I, I'm very one of the very fortunate people, kind of like you, who get to took my hobby and that became my vocation. Exactly. So, and then became, I mean, there's nothing like getting paid for it. If you like to eat, which most of us like to do, and if you can get cake or eating, wow. you're not like, I mean, that's heaven. And, and kind of way, that's what you and I did. We like to fight. We like to test ourselves. We like to go out and party. And, and of course, in your case, you can dance. And, <laughs> and uh, we, we like to go out on the weekend. I, we would take a band, and I would take a crew from Minneapolis and go to, you know, South Carolina, go for, compete with people like Jay Bell. And, and, and Keith Vitale and those guys from, you know, North and South Carolina. And, and we would go down to Texas, you know, and watch people like Skip and Mullen fight. Wow. You know, you know so we, we just we just travel and and, uh, and and not get in trouble, not go to jail. Yeah, right. Well, I, I tell people that, to me, my friends in the weekends were stick-up kids. You know, they were robbing people. So I figured out how to do it legally. I went to karate tournaments and I won. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I completely can relate. And if it wasn't for this, I don't know if I would have been, you know, my record would have been the same, which is impeccable. I have no records um, in terms of jail, is what I mean. Right. But, okay, so now it, it's now, um, I guess, the mid-'80s, and you're not fighting any longer. You start doing predominantly forms. Yeah. Let's talk yeah. about that for a minute. Well, two things happen, um, um, you know, as, as we get older. You know, we, 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 we can't we can't be out there we can't be out there getting getting kickboxing and, and getting hit in the head, and and uh, so um, I, I I still had a lot of urge to compete. So I would I would I would do some point fighting, and I would do some um, um, uh, kata. And and uh, um, fortunately for us, it was I think of course I'm I'm being real you know selective here, but it was the best time. Of, of martial arts as far as kata competition. Well, listen, h h his, his, history proves that because the fact of the matter is there were more spectators and there were more variety of talent than we have oh. ever seen. Today is just a duplication of each other when back yeah, then I, it was the original flavor. You know, even Heidi Ochai and... and, and uh, Miyazaki. Uh, I, yeah, I competed with, you know, um, um, Lori Clapper <laughs> down in uh, Miami, remember? Right, and, yeah, yeah. I did my Leslie. Uh, 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 and let's talk about Miami for a second. Actually, it, it, I'm not sure if it was in Miami. It might have been in Daytona during that time or, or whatever. But U.S. Open, 1979, pretty much it was the traditionalists and Team Forms versus the contemporaries, George Strong and Ernie Reyes, Senior, etc. Right, right, right. Uh, Karen Shepard, Pino Morales, with his web chain. Uh, my team consists of uh, Chuck Merriman. Uh, uh, Lori Clapper, Lori Clapper, uh, myself. I think Bill Pickles from Bill, Canada. Bill Pickles, a guy named Yamashita too, a black guy, but who was using the name Yamashita? Yeah. I think. So you know, we, we competed and we, we beat those guys, and they were they were the you know the people to beat, and that was a team cut event, and and I still have that trophy where we're picking through the trophy somewhere. There's a famous photo, 1979. The grand champion fighter won a nine foot trophy. His name was Tony Palmore. Yeah. 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 That was Ted Skretsky was the promoter of that actual event. Right. I got, yeah, yeah. that the world was gonna end back in the days. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's when he sold it to Char a guy named Charlie Brown, believe it or not. In the nineteen eighty one, Charlie Brown had it over in um Daytona, or actually Tampa, because I went there, Tampa St. Pete. All right, Daytona so Beach. Daytona Beach. One of the you know, even Heidi Ochai and 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 uh, Miyazaki. I, yeah, I competed with you know um, um, Lori Clapper <laughs> down in Miami. Remember? Right. And yeah, yeah. I did my Leslie. Uh, 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 and let's talk about Miami for a second. Actually, it, it, I'm not sure if it was in Miami. It might have been in Daytona during that time or, or, or whatever. But U.S. Open, 1979, pretty much it was the traditionalists and Team Forms versus the contemporaries, George Strong and Ernie Reyes, Senior, etc. Right, right, right. Uh, 
Right, right, right. Uh, Karen Shepard, Pilo Morales, with his web chain. Uh, my team consists of uh, Chuck Merriman. Uh, uh, Lori Clapper. Lori Clapper. Uh, myself, I think Bill Pickles from Bill, Canada. Bill Pickles, a guy named Yamashita too, a black guy, but he was using the name Yamashita, yeah. I think. So, you know, we, we competed and we, we beat those guys. And they were, they were the, you know, the people to beat. And that was a team cut event, and and I still have that trophy where we're picking through the trophy somewhere. There's a famous photo, 1979. The grand champion fighter won a nine foot trophy. His name was Tony Palmore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was Ted Skretsky was the promoter of that actual event. Right. I got. Yeah. yeah, I thought the war was going to end back in the days. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when he sold it to Char a guy named Charlie Brown, believe it or not. In 1981, <laughs> Charlie Brown had it over in um, Daytona, or actually Tampa, because I went there, Tampa, St. Pete. All right, Daytona so... Beach. Daytona Beach. One of the, and and he, would, uh, he would have after parties. And and a matter of fact, you can ask Cynthia Rothrock next time you see her. That That's when uh, 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 she didn't want nothing to do with me before the tournament. Because I was out in the balcony, and I see this couple of beautiful-looking ladies. So I said, hey, how are you? Waved at him, and they just kind of looked at me like, who the hell is that? <laughs> and, and, but after the tournament, they were, you know, we, we, we were together. The champion. Yeah, the champion. Just so you know, there you fans out there who's listening and training. There's more than one reason why you want to train and become a champion. That's you right. Winners. <laughs> yeah, and they feel safe. And they feel safe. You know, yeah, yeah that, that, those are some of the French benefits of being a champion. You know, you got a chance to get the damsel in distress before she's in distress, so to speak. So she feels safe. Okay, so then I remember the Atlantic Oil team ended up having um, tournaments in Bermuda. And then I saw you there as a competitor, and I saw you judging. What the heck was that about? Well, uh, Chuck asked me, Chuck Merriman. Um, by the way, you know, he's, he's one of the living legends as far as he goes in martial arts. I can't give him more credit for what he done in sports karate in the early days. We were talking about Bermuda. Remember, he started the, uh, he had a sponsor. Yeah, Atlantic Oil, John Doyce. Atlantic yeah. Oil Company, and then became Transworld years after. Transworld Oil, yeah. And, and uh, uh, he, he started the very first, even to this day, I think, the, uh, even to this day, because I remember making like thirty or $40,000 a year competing on a weekend. Right. So they would give us, the, the Transworld Oil would give us bonus on top of. Yeah, of on top of the win. Yep. That, Money was better back then than it is today. Yeah, but it, it was also, yeah, and, and, and for what it was worth, going over to Bermuda was like going to Hans Island. You know, yeah, I qualified and everything was paid Bruce, for. It was kind of like the, the, the Bruce Lee entered the draft. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, absolutely. He invited the top officials, and, and I said, hey, that, that, I'll do that. You know, I, I want to be part of the official team. And, and uh, uh, top fighters, you know, of the time, uh, uh, well, forms too, because I mean, oh, yeah. forms and competitors forms. too. And and and, but the thing was, what Chuck did was, he would give out. I think I I still remember the grand championship was worth five thousand dollars. Yeah, run up with twenty five hundred, run up. Right, and that kind of money, you know, everybody wanted to come, and 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 uh, and and this mysterious island in Bermuda. It was crazy, uh, huh? I, I took second place in forms, Korean forms, behind Charlie Lee, and that second place was three hundred dollars. We never yeah. got three hundred dollars for no freaking whatever. Three hundred dollars now. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, but different but world. What, 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 what was great was that on top of that, if you were on the team, they would give us bonuses. Yeah. If you won a grand championship, they would give us three thousand dollars. If you won first place in your division, they would give us. So yeah, so you had a, you had an incentive program. I I just wish hindsight being twenty twenty that that maybe that could have been invested in the actual sport itself because I think that if the sport would have had a business structure that could grow from, which has never happened by the way, um, and, and that's what my goal is. My goal is to systemize Thai stuff. I actually used to own six karate schools in New York. I was fortunate enough to use martial arts as a vocation. Where I didn't have to be on the teams per se. I was more like a rebel. And I did that on purpose because I always had, you know, I never had less than $1,000 in my pocket like an idiot, you know. But I, I earned six figures at a very young age because I learned how to become a martial arts um, leader and professional. I did a lot of work with Tony Robbins back in 1991, 92 also. So, 
So what I'm, my commitment right now, as you can see, is to try to, and this is my last so-called rodeo. It may take 20 years, may take 30 years, I don't know, but I believe we could take sport martial arts, sport karate competition, using things of the past to a level that it never has been. Maybe it won't be huge, but it will be bigger than what it ever was. That's my well, goal. I can help you with that. You know, I work for a company called Fight TV. And what I would, what I would suggest all you fans and all you viewers to do is it's, a, it's an app on your phone, on your, on your uh, Android or uh, iPhone that you can get. It's F-I-T-E. And if you, can, if you download it, it's free. But what it does is it's a platform. We have, I think they have over 5 million subscribers. Wow. And, and, and they, they basically um, uh, promote anything to do with fighting, boxing, kickboxing, from all over the world. Well, you, the you, world. you did briefly mention that they also had the style that comes from Burma. Uh, uh, it's called Latte. And it's it's original version of uh, 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 Thai kickboxing. Where Burma used to be the capital of, of, of you know, before they split, you know, Thailand. Um, and and it's bare knuckle. It's a traditional wolf. They fight in the ring. Uh, you know, hands are taped, knuckles are taped, but that's it. I mean, and they, but they allow headbutts too. Oh, headbutts legal. This is the closest thing you get. Now, let me let me explain to you a little bit of rules. The closest thing you get to what you get out in the bar. It's a much more sophisticated. Because hip hop goes, elbow goes, knee goes. You can use any part. You can use your shoulder to to uh, knock out your opponent. Now, let me tell you what, how the rule goes. I believe it's three five-minute rounds, okay, with uh, two-minute rest between, okay, and and... There is only way you can win, or there's two ways you can win. Doctor stops a fight, or you get knocked out. That's the only way you can win. Right, because if you don't... You can beat me. You, let me tell you right. something. You and I can get in the ring. You can beat me to a pulp for 15 minutes. If you can't knock me out, or if doctor don't stop a fight, fight's a draw. Yeah, that, that, that's... I actually saw a documentary on um, Netflix that actually showed that, and I was mind-boggled. I mean, because that's like a whole other level. It, you know, uh, again, we think about Muay Thai, but these guys are fighting no. there like they are uh, really, really fighting. So so, so now, when it comes to um, the judging aspects of any sport, you and I completely agree that you can't have a sport without the so-called authorities. I mean, you got to have the people who are, are, are in control. It's become well, where, problem, yeah. just like anything else, yeah, just sir. like anything else, and, and, and you're going to agree with me on everything I'm going to tell you, about to tell you, just like anything else, you cannot take your sports and your passion of taking the sports into a next level without having some kind of rule. Now, they have, they have rules out there, but rule flex all the time, way too much. You know, just like the, 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 the video you showed, the guy throwing the back fist, He's hanging on the end of his glove. Oh. <laughs> I warned him. I said, I said, guys, listen, I recorded this. Don't you dare show this. Cause I mean, don't, don't give a point. I'm gonna... And that, yeah, anyway. Well, that, that, but the problem is, it's not, not, not the guy who threw the bat. This, I don't really blame him. Right. I blame the official. Official should have taken a point away from doing, trying to stuff like the that. The authority. Or, or, yeah. So, but he's awarding him for bad behavior. No different than how I train my shadow, right? If, if I give him a treat every time he jumps up on my table, guess what? He's going to do that every day. And that's the problem with, with any type of sport. You know, if you don't penalize and if you don't award good behavior and penalize bad behavior, guess what? That's what they're going to do. If that guy is doing a win by using... Using the bow that it's it, it's ways of you know it's more like a baton training than than uh, um, you can hit me with that thing anytime you want. All that's going to do is break break that low number little stick. Wow. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Listen, I, I, on another note, I have a student of mine named Jean Claude Lewiston. His nickname is Exotic. So he's a real good fighter. He's taught a bunch of top fighters also, but he's on his way with his instructor. And his father got his black belt from instructor too. And they're going to a, a country called Okinawa, and he's going with Chuck Merriman right now as we speak. Yeah. Well, have it, try to try to twirl those those balls they got over there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> those 
say it weighs more than more than a steel, and they're harder than you know. They, I mean, they're they're uh, hard, either teak wood or oak. I mean, they don't you know you're not gonna be you're not gonna be spinning those around and flipping it around. I mean, so what I'm trying to tell you is that it, judging is number one. If you don't have and if if you don't if you don't have a strong judging and 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 rule in place, then you have chaos. You know. Then, then, then I all I have to do is um, I I used to argue. I think we talked about this. I used to argue when when Steve Nasty Anderson would do the die punch. Well, ju ju just so you know, that's become the staple technique with an extended glove and a and a stiff elbow, as if that was a point. And this is what happened in 2018. People just don't know anybody. They think that's a technique. Well, th that's the problem. The problem is. If you're not looking at what you're going to hit, blind technique, I'm not going to award you. That, and you're right. And, and and those are the things that I think you need to put down. I would love to see some martial art organization or sports karate, because karate was not meant to be competition. Be a sport. Right, I know. So if we're going to, if we're going to, if we're going to, you and I participated in this. So let's, let's make a rule. And, and follow the rules and somebody who can execute the rules that still transcend that martial art spirit, you know. I, I agree. And listen, I know that, and I'm so, I mean, when you contacted me the other day, I was really a little um, shocked, but pleasantly shocked because the fact of the matter is that this endeavor is going to take a team of people in different places to make things really happen. I knew that there had to be people that were unhappy with the state of how things were, and they just chose not to participate because the truth, truth of the matter is that, you know, I see that it used to be the, the ball had to just go in the hoop until 1988 and then just hit the, the rim maybe in, in, in 2000. You know, today they text it in, you know, that. so I agree a thousand percent. That's why the referees, and we can use technology to help people learn how to judge too, but there's people that know better that will come out at least once. Well, I, you know what? I, like, like I told you the other day on the phone, I would love to participate and help you with officiating. You know, I'm too old to be out there competing anymore. Well, well, well hold on a second. I beg to differ because about two years ago, after over 20 <laughs> years of not competing, I think I saw a lookalike that did a cartwheel kick, a cartwheel kick, a high degree that you could have threw your shoulder off at, at, at a tournament called the Battle of Atlanta. Did that, have, did that really happen? Yeah, yeah. Well, here's what happened. You know, sir, I mean, that, that was necessary for me to do that because I no longer, in order for me to get three points, right, I had to jump up, spin around, kick somebody in the head. I no longer be able to do that. And this guy I was fighting was a defending champion. He was a lot taller than I was. He was about your height. Actually, he was from New York, I believe. And and, and what I ended up doing, is, so I'm thinking, well, I'm, I got 20 seconds left. I'm down by two. Well, what can I do? And that was the only thing I could do. I could do a cartwheel and kick him in the head, you know, and, and, and spin and kick him in the head. And then since I can't jump up in air and spin around, so I have to do a little Billy Blank cartwheel kick and kick him in the head. Hey. I, <laughs> I believe it's in a video somewhere. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm going to grab that and make sure we edit it inside. But this is the thing about it. You hadn't competed in how long? 28 years. It's still inside of you, baby. I think. I think the pro the only problem is that we actually might have to stop you from jumping in. If we ever, to, if we're able to reset it, you may want to just jump in as a super fight against somebody. You know, maybe not in the <laughs> tournament. And, and this is what it's about. You know, being able to have a good time. I mean, how much did you enjoy that technique? Oh, you know, the, the best part was in my corner. I, I had so many superstars uh, from Keith Vitale, Rudy Smedley. Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, Jeff Smith, Ray McCallum, you know, Brian Fong, they were all in my corner. The other guy, you know, uh, unfortunately for the other gentleman who I was fighting for, for the first fight, it was probably going like, who the hell is this little guy? So, you know, but it, it was great time. When lost the draw, it was wonderful time. Well, that, that's my point, that I really enjoy a friendly game of Kia, except that it's just sad when sometimes it's not consistent with the ball going in the hoop and they hit the rim and they give points and like, wait, that's not karate. So yeah, we, we absolutely, 
And one of the things that's very, very important, guys, is that when we had the 3,000 and even Long Beach International had 5,000 competitors, I mean, they, they, these events were huge. Every technique was a point. Every technique was a point. The sweep with a follow-up was a point. The cartwheel kick, the scissor takedown, you, the takedown wasn't the point. It was the scoring after the fact. So I believe right. that keeping that integrity, that consistency is what we need. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah I agree 100%. You know, let's, let's bring essence of martial arts in, into a competition, a sports of martial arts. You know, I think that's the important part. And, I'd be, you know, I would love to help you any way I can. Um, like I said, uh, if if we can put this together, we can put you on a fight TV, and and uh, we can move forward. Well, I, I believe that this is more than possible, because again, this is my last so-called um, you know attempt at helping somebody from generations to come. I want my children to have a better platform than even I've had in the last thirty years, because it's been really sad to think where someone like me who hasn't been in really the best shape. When I go out there, I feel like a book. I just know things that other people just don't know yet. You know, so it does yeah. take some time. Yeah, I think the people who's out there, you know, the champion should represent what we're trying to accomplish. You know, and they should, they should look like a champion. They should act like a champion. And, you know, end of the day, it's still martial arts. One of the things that I, I really resent and really dislike about UFC, or uh, right now how the state of UFC it's because of what they're trying to do to hype the fight and stuff like that. The 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 respect part is gone. Yeah, but gone. you know what? You know what's funny about that? They got that from wrestling, and, and you're well, part of both yeah. worlds. It's so funny because I concur with you. There is a thin line between promoting and going overboard, and they've gone so overboard that we just seen the recent fiasco because of it. No, I, that, that's it. it, it it's it, it, exactly right. But you know. You, the, the sports entertainment is one thing, which is professional wrestling, is, and which I was uh, absolutely involved in. And and uh, um, I got to wear my gi in, in, in the national television a couple of times with my son. Yeah, and, and some dude named Ernest the Cat Miller, too. You may know, some of you yeah. guys may know him. Yeah, I managed him for many years. And, and, um, and you know, we, we, we were the Dynamo Karate team. But let me tell you a real funny story. When Billy Blank, who used to be my roommate and, 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 and Trans World Oil team, who later became very famous was Ty Bowl. And <clears throat> we did a, we did a, like a Saturday Night Live, we did a skit, uh, kind of take off on Ty Bowl, and there's a thing called Cat Bowl. You can go to YouTube and find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. He had the <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, my God. So, so listen, so we had a 1 800 number out there that was the actual number. And, you know, the people could order, right? But it, we didn't we didn't sell anything. It was just a skit, like a Saturday Night Live. Yeah, yeah. And we had so many calls that people wanted to buy our, the uh, our <laughs> program. No, it was, it, was, it was a riot. But but Billy Blank's lawyer, not Billy. Yeah, Billy's yeah, they, they called them. Called up the right, they called you Caesar, <laughs> Caesar Surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, uh, even though I, I, by the way, I also interviewed our buddy Ernest Cat Miller. I'm going to send you all these links of these interviews that I've done because when I first met him, he was known as Dirty Red and he yeah. was, he was playing for the New England Patriots. I mean, he, he, he you know, since we, you and I know he was a football player uh, right. along with Andre Tippett, who was actually uh, yeah. legendary and was on your guys' team also. But, um, listen, I'm really, really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to take too much more of your time, but I, I, I feel honored. I appreciate it. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that. You know, we leverage this opportunity to be able to reset something that we love. And I believe that you believe that we can do better than ever yeah. with some guidance. Yeah. Well, we have a platform out there now with this digital platform. We can get, you know, reach everybody. With Fight TV, we can, we can reach everybody. We have a smartphone and, and put that out there. So, uh, you know, let me help you. Um, yes, sir. Uh, absolutely. We'll figure it out. Bringing back the, the, the great times of, uh, you, know, you know, 80s when we used to compete. And, and you know what? 100%, the 80s was the platinum era that stood on top of the shoulders of the golden era. And the golden yeah. era stood on top of the blood and guts era. And I think that all the above were important, but the future is brighter than ever because of what I believe we're going to do. So I want to thank you. Oh, one other quick question. 
I know you're still in the oh no now, but wasn't it on or something like that? Wait, 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 let me backtrack. How did you have it spelled back in the day? It wasn't oh no. No, no. Here's what happened. You know, I'm a migrant, probably like your parents were or your family. So when I first came here, you know, I'm sure when my mother went through the immigration, they said, what's your name? And my mother with broken English says, oh no. <laughs> so this, uh, so they spelled her name. Our name, O N O W O, gotcha. on a wall. On the wall, okay. So it was on a lot of our documents. That's O N O W O. But when I got older and went to get my passport, my because I'm still Japanese national. Um, yes, I have a green card, so INS can stay home. Um, but uh, uh, they spelled my name because they translated directly from Japanese because there's no direct. Spelling translation gotcha. in English, it's all uh, uh, by uh, phonetic. It's, it's all by sound. So they, they said, is it on a wall or is it on a O? And they said, it's all in, on a O. So they said, oh, then you, you should spell your name O-N-O-O. So now my passport's... Now that's part of the history. Oh, no. I think they did a song like that. Oh, 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 maybe, oh, oh. Anyway, a lot of moments that we can create for future stars. And, and, and I think that what's going to end up happening is that we might have to coach some of these guys also on how to present themselves, almost like an a &R, you know, like an right. artisan repertoire, because I think that the talent today is phenomenal. They just need guidance. And I think, I, and I agree with you, it's not their fault. It's leadership or lack thereof. And I believe we have just enough energy to still help these guys when it comes to, you know, leveraging their talents. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There's a lot of great, great athletes out there, and they're probably better athletes out there than we were. But they, I don't think they have the guidance. That yeah, certainly. So, so it is leadership. Okay. In the famous words of some crazy Puerto Rican from the Bronx, from my in Jersey, when I say A B, you say C ya. A B. C ya. We out of here. Thank you very much.